Hey everybody, it's me. I'm back. Somebody asked me yesterday to do a video about some numbers and math. And here we are. So this is an interesting title. 17 days. This is an interesting title. What does that mean? But <laughs> we'll dig into that. So thank you all for being here. Uh, last week was the roughest week, in my opinion, in the history of crypto. Let me share some of the things that are happening behind the scenes that you may not be aware of that impact Bitcoin. Okay, so disclaimer, edutainment, you guys know the drill. And the story today in the book is the contagion effects of crypto echo the global financial crisis of 2008. Bitcoin was built to solve those problems. And some people believe the crypto winter could be far from over. So take that as a grain of salt as we go through this presentation, because this presentation is about history and numbers. Also where money is flowing, very important for you to know. But uh, we still need to flush a lot of crap out. Still 98% of tokens are complete garbage, just like 40% of equities, garbage, zombies, gonna shrivel up and die over the next two, four, eight years. That's a given. That's just what happens. The space is very Darwinian. And <clears throat> Michael Saylor described what has happened over the last couple of days, last week, as a very expensive advertisement for Bitcoin. It's funny because the guy I was talking about next took a call from SBF, and that was the most expensive phone call he's ever had in his life. We'll talk more about that too. But I'd also add to, like to add, it's also a very expensive advertisement for Trezor and Ledger and all the self-custody wallets. We've been stressing that since we began this. We have an entire playlist around wallets and security and everything else. And some people are still afraid to take control of their own destiny, but they need to, and they need to fast. So let's jump into the first interesting part. And, you know, we don't know who we can trust anymore. Best not to trust anybody. Just listen and learn and do your own research. Make your own uh, calculations. Thank you, Marina and Glenn. Love you guys. Um, but this is, was an interesting article from Barron's today. And uh, as former Sank, <laughs> I don't even want to mention his name, just call him SBF, uh, was dubbed Crypto's White Knight. And now he's facing investigations, criminal charges, etc. I hope very soon. But the chief rival, CZ Champeng Zhao of Binance, says he has plans to help bail out struggling digital asset firms. Remember, Somebody else said that very recently too. But the question is, will CV save it or does it need to be saved? That's the other question. And right now we will question everything deeply, like the way we analyze crypto stocks, so uh, crypto tokens. So first of all, CZ does have a mind-blowing arsenal. A big thank you to Cano8 for putting this together in the community and Patreon. He listened to a video, I think it was from Coin Bureau, shout out to Guy, and pulled out the actual holdings, the full transparent holdings that Binance has. $23 billion of BUSD, $16 billion of USDT, $7 billion of Bitcoin, $7 billion of ETH, $6 billion of BNB, which is not as big as I would have expected, uh, $11 billion of other cryptos, totaling approximately $70 billion. That is a big arsenal. Not to be confused with the English football team. For anybody in the UK that's still up, uh, I'm just wondering, are there any Arsenal fans out there? Now, Elon Musk chimed in. Of course, as he does, he's chiming in on everything 24 hours a day. And the question was, um, will Bitcoin make it? And Elon says, yes, it will. And he says, even still, while trust in institutions and custodial service providers in the ecosystem is failing hard, Musk did say Bitcoin will make it. And consumers simply have to learn to trust themselves more than they trust others, especially with their sovereignty, their destiny and everything else. And many believe this is a positive for Bitcoin. In addition, as Michael Saylor said to, we cannot become decentralized until people get comfortable with self-custody and sovereignty. And CZ chimed in, I think before or after, I don't know where I read this, but always just test with a little piece. Spend the 60 bucks, 100 bucks, 120 bucks, 180 bucks, whatever it is for a wallet, and just test. Send 0.001 of Bitcoin, see if it works. Send it back, 
change your dress, recover your seat, all that type of stuff. Just do it also. I'll add the playlist as well for you guys later. But this was interesting. This is the weekly inflows. Despite the week we had, despite FTX and the huge black swan that crippled the crypto industry, $42 million flew into digital assets and the lion's share of that flew into Bitcoin at $20 million. And that is the biggest inflow into the crypto space for 14 weeks. And that is a positive sign that, you know, when all hell's breaking loose, big money is still coming in. Let's look at this number. This is the 10,000 plus whales. Now, these are the wallets with more than 10,000 Bitcoin. Some have 50,000, some have 120,000 all across the board. So when one of these goes up in numbers, it's staggering. I shared this chart yesterday, I think, in the community. And ever since I shared it, it's actually gone up by two. Yesterday it was 120 whales with more than 10,000 Bitcoin. Today it's 122. It keeps going up and to the right. And that is up a massive 52.5% in the number of these whales since over the last 12 months. I think at the beginning, or exactly 12 months ago, it was about 80. So that is a staggering move. And the whales are accumulating. They normally dump at the top and accumulate at the bottom. Not sharing anything. Their on-chain can always be perhaps manipulated. But again, that's a positive sign. The other thing that's happening is people are figuring out how to use their wallets. This is extreme drainage. Historical moment of 150,000 Bitcoin on Sunday left exchanges yesterday, November 13th, 2022. Uh, I've never seen a number that big. And the price was still going down, but people were just ripping everything off exchanges as quickly as possible. And this, as they say, is when the tide goes out, it'll expose. Once these exchanges start turning off withdrawals, it means they don't have your Bitcoin. Don't get to that stage. Get on it first. Okay. Now, the other sad news, which is not perfect news, is miners continue to dump because electricity and energy costs are going up and they remain under extreme pressure. And this data highlights that. That down level of Bitcoin dumpage from miners is the highest in the last couple of years. Uh, and we have record low hash prices, which means the hash rate is record high, but the price you get for it is record low. And miners selling around 9.5% of their treasuries, which is around 7.6 million Bitcoin since all this began. But this sell-off is the sharpest monthly decline for miner balances since September 2018. And again, they're having a hard time. Any miner that is in any way fragile from a financial perspective, balance sheet perspective, they're going to really suffer. And every day Bitcoin price stays down this low, they're bleeding money. So there's very few that are actually making a profit. But the big story today is actually related to miners, but more the halving clock. We are now technically 494 days, 17 hours, 43 minutes away from the next Bitcoin halving. Why do we care? Well, the world didn't really know what it was last time around, you know, circa early 2020, because they were focused on other things like C19. But the OGs and the whales that know how this thing works, they watch this very, very carefully. And we'll go into the history as to why it's important to watch. First of all, a quick visual of Bitcoin having history from charts BTC. You can see the four different epochs. We're now in epoch four. And we run up to that next halving price in the previous amount of days. Uh, what was it? 484 days, I think. Um, but the real thing to look at here is there comes a time during the series of pre-halving run, post-halving run, and then way after the halving, a duck in price. We are in that duck in price moment, but there also comes a time where that duck stops. And that's what we're talking about today. Let's look at some numbers. First of all, the halving is nigh. The next halving is projected to occur March 22, 2024. A lot of people are excited by that date. And it may sound very far away, but it's actually not that far away at all. This is 494 days to go. And that is between today, November 14th, and March 22nd. And the key here is Bitcoin has historically bottomed on average 477 days prior to the halving, ladies and gentlemen. And that means we only have 17 days to go. 
if history repeats, I don't want people coming to me and say, well, you said it was going to start going up. This is just a history lesson of numbers, okay? So I have to throw those caveats in there. Nobody has a crystal ball. Uh, nobody out there. And these are historic times in every perspective. I spent a lot of time uh, during the summer explaining that this time is different to many perspectives. Boy, it's different. But let's look at some more history. And this is a cool report from Pantera Capital. Big thank you to Sanjay for sharing it with me. And if history was to repeat itself, the price of Bitcoin would trough November 30th, okay, 16, 70 days from now. And we would then see a rally into early 2024 and then a strong rally after having it. Now, I covered this uh, about a month ago in a video, I think it was early October. And I have a slide from that video coming up shortly. But the key thing to look at here is typically per Pantera, and the way they analyze the history, which is slightly different to mine, is there will be a pre-having run, and that'll take the Bitcoin price up 2.3x from where it is today. That'd be about $36,000. And the post-having run of 4.2x, taking the price up to 148636 And I know I can hear the groans. It's like, oh, God, no. It's not going to go anywhere. Bitcoin's going to be flat for the next 10 years. Well, that's kind of not how it works. And the gentlemen at Pantera Capital and ladies over there, they know exactly what's up and they analyze it every way to Sunday. So why does this impact is, we mentioned the date, March 22nd, 2024. Since most Bitcoins are now in circulation, each halving will be almost exactly half as big as a reduction in new supply. And again, 36K, is the pre-run and 149k after. Now, my estimates that I did in a previous video, I have the pre-run going to about, I can't remember the exact number, I think it was about $63,000, and then up after that and stabilizing at around 81k sandbag scenario. We don't know where this is going to go. We don't know how much demand there will be, how much adoption there will be, but if things continue the way they are, we're going to see a couple of things happening. One is absolute drainage on exchanges. People will not be leaving their Bitcoin on exchanges anymore. And that's some type of solid warranty in place. And nobody's willing to offer that. And second of all, miners are running in. I'll talk more about those later and a little bit of game theory. But this is the key thing to look at. And this is kind of staggering. In this chart, it depicts the halvings supply reduction as a percentage of the outstanding Bitcoin at the time of halving. Okay, it's hard to wrap your head around that, but look at the amount of Bitcoin that is left to mine and the impact of this having on that actual supply. Now, the first having reduced the supply of Bitcoins by 17% uh, of the total outstanding Bitcoin, so it wasn't a big deal. But it can be a massive impact on supply and it has a huge impact on price. Obviously, Bitcoin is a lot more expensive nowadays. Now, each subsequent having impact on price will probably taper off in importance as the ratio of reduction in the supply of new Bitcoins from previous halvings to the next decreases. But the number I want you to train your eye on here is that 47% down there. That is the delta between the reward that the miners get per block, 6.25, will fall to 3.125. And that is the 47% the is the reduction in new supply as percentage of the previous halving. So it is big. And why do we care about that? Well, I have a theory I'll share with you guys in a minute. This is the game theory. Now, Bitcoin game theory you hear about a lot. And the game theory that secures Bitcoin requires that A, miners have an incentive to mine honest blocks, and B, miners have a cost or disincentive to attempt any dishonesty. And boy, have we seen a lot of dishonesty very, very recently. But for Bitcoin to be sustained, it has to be worthwhile for miners. And as value goes up, miners flood in. However, this is the weird paradox of this time around. I always talk about things front running each other. And this time, the miners are flooding in ahead of price going up. Because I, 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 I guess they anticipate when the run is going to happen, they want to have the rigs turned on and be ready to go for 17 days from now. And we have 494 days to go to get to that end of the double juicy reward. After that, it halves. Again, back down to this level. Let me blow this up for you. They're not going to be getting 6.25 Bitcoin per block anymore. It'll be 3.125. That's 
that is why the arms race is on to grab as much hash rate as they can right now because it's going to be a lot more difficult to do that and typically you know some people argue price follows hash rate hash rate follows price hash rate determines security the more secure the network the price the more secure the assets and that's what we're looking for nowadays the more the price should go up or vice versa it doesn't really matter but things are a little bit different this time with how the miners are exploding up that hash rate they are mining at a loss just to be there and hopefully get some of that precious bitcoin so what do all these miners know all around the world will they expect price to go up for this happening and maybe maybe hopefully bitcoin will bottom in 17 days we're not out of the woods yet again this crypto winter has been brutal it could last a bit longer but remember this also well if it wasn't for the black swan we wouldn't have seen sub 17.5 again and right now the price is finish with this uh, doo -doo -doo. pulling up the bitcoin quote gotta fire up my trading view live and bitcoin is currently trading at 16,640 so up 330 over the last 24 hours and that's it ladies and gentlemen be safe out there i'll see you all tomorrow i had a lot of cool charts and macro stuff to show you for th tuesday tomorrow is going to show today but this came instead so thank you all have a good night thanks for being here see you later